So let's summarize Unit 7. Unit 7 was on the phenomenon of metabolic scaling. Began by reviewing some scaling basics and reminding us that volume scales as L cubed because volumes are three dimensional. Area scales as L squared because areas are two dimensional and that includes surface areas, any old area. Length scales as L to the one and mass scales as L cubed because mass is proportional to volume. So then we turned our attention to metabolic scaling. And there's a long-standing empirical observation that the metabolic rate Y scales with a three-quarter power law. So it has this functional form. The metabolic rate of an organism is related to its mass raised to the three-quarters power. This is known as Kleiber's law, and um, it's an example of what's called allometric scaling, which um, in biomechanics and physiology basically refers to any scaling that's not linear. Um, so this is, again, has been known for a long time as Kleiber's law. One might expect that metabolic rate would be proportional to simply mass. The more massive you are, the more stuff you have, the more your metabolic rate should be. <clears throat> But if this was the case, because metabolism generates heat as a byproduct, um, animals would melt or they would overheat. Maybe they wouldn't act, I don't know, maybe they would melt. Um, so, because animals need to dissipate heat. Um, and so um, there wouldn't be enough surface area to dissipate heat if this relationship was true. So then the logical thing to think about is that um, what's at play is the surface area to volume ratio. And the key idea here is that heat leaves organisms through the surface. That's how I lose heat, through my skin. Um, and so if metabolic rate generates heat, and what limits my um, metabolic rate is the ability to get rid of that heat so I don't get hotter and hotter and hotter, that it should be the surface area that determines metabo metabolic rate. That certainly seems like a sensible idea. But if so, that would lead to an exponent of two-thirds, not three-quarters. To see that, um, note that surface area scales as L squared. Mass is proportional to volume is proportional to L cubed. So then if I take the cube root of this equation, I end up with L being proportional to the cube root of M, M to the third. I should mention that these Ks are just generic constants of proportionality, and the K here isn't necessarily the same as the K here. So surface area being proportional to L squared if I plug in m to the third for this, I get m to the two-thirds power. So one would think, using this line of uh, reasoning, which seems quite reasonable, that we would see an exponent of two-thirds, and yet that's not what Kleiber's law gives us. So that's a mystery. There's something that needs explaining here. So an explanation was put forth in the late 1990s by West, Brown, and Enquist. And the ingredients of their model um, is as follows. So they say that metabolic rate, it's not about the surface area, but it's determined by fundamental properties of the vascular network. And the vascular network is a fractal, and it's self-similar. So we assume that at every level, every time the network branches, it branches into n times more branches. So then that's constant across all levels of this network. And the ratios of vessel length and vessel radii, how those change are also constant from one level to another. It's scale-free. Additionally, they assume that flow through the network is optimized. And that means that the cross-sectional area of the network at any stage should be the same. And then biologically, physiologically, capillaries are the same size in all organisms, which I think is a um, <coughs> very well-accepted Thing, it sort of is limited, the size of your capillaries is limited basically by the biochemistry that the capillaries have to perform. Um, the network also is assumed to fill the entire volume of the organ, uh, organism, and that makes sense because um, all parts of a creature need to get served by this network, by the vascular network. It needs oxygen, it needs nutrients to be delivered to it. 
And so the overall metabolic rate of an organism then they say is proportional to the rate of blood flow through the capillaries. That's what determines, that's sort of what limits the metabolic rate um, flows through this network. The rate at which oxygen and nutrients can be delivered to cells and which carbon dioxide um, and wastes can be taken away. So if one does a bunch of geometry and some math on that, one is able to derive Kleiber's law, this relationship, a three-quarters exponent. Um, a few details. Along the way in the derivation of this, some approximations are made, some mathematical approximations are made, and these tend to involve assuming that the network is very large, meaning that it has very many levels. So um, one would expect that um, these results would apply better, this, this scaling law would be a little bit more accurate for larger organisms than for smaller organisms. So there are some, a few mathematical subtleties in the, der in the derivation, but it's overall on quite solid footing. A number of other scaling laws follow from the basic three-quarter scaling law for metabolism. For example, many per mass metabolic rates scale as m to the minus one quarter. Examples of these include the respiratory rate, the heart rate, and the number of mitochondria per cell on average. Biological times, which are the inverse of rates, tend to scale as m to the quarter. And examples of this include uh, a creature's lifetime. So for example, an elephant, um, big animals, they tend to live a long time, but they're, um, compared to smaller ones, but their uh, respiratory rate or heart rate will be uh, much, much lower. So the heart won't beat as fast, they'll live longer. So this minus quarter and plus quarter, if you have a situation where those are multiplied together, they cancel each other out, and you get something that's independent of mass, something that should be invariant across many life forms. So um, uh, for mammals, this turns out to be about uh, 1.5 billion heartbeats. So mice and whales and elephants and humans and foxes all are going to have about 1.5 billion heartbeats on average in their life, which corresponds to the processing of 10 to the 16 ATP molecules. So um, the basic scaling ideas have been pushed sort of beyond the boundaries of metabolism. And there's current research looking at applying these scaling ideas to larger systems forests and not just trees, insect colonies and not just insects, and then cities and not just humans. And I should mention, um, there's also current research looking at how metabolic rates and other related biological processes scale with temperature. I haven't talked about that in this course. They're not, uh, it's not a power law relationship, but it's interesting work. It's very much inspired by this and is in a similar flavor that it sort of starts with a little bit of basic physics and uh, chemistry, and then uses that to look for patterns across many organisms. So there's a, um, some interesting current research on this as well. So this brings us to the end of Unit 7. In the next unit, which is the last full unit of the course, we'll look at scaling in urban systems. So we'll take some of these ideas developed in this unit and see how we can look for similar patterns and maybe similar explanations in uh, urban systems in cities. So we'll see you next week.